Hi and welcome to the Bristol Music Show. Yep, yeah, we're here each week on May TV and every Monday on BCFM Radio, bringing you the best in Bristol music. As usual, we've got tons and tons of stuff coming up for you today, so here's the lineup. We're looking back once more at our lounge room gigs, this time hearing from the man behind the plan, financial advisor and music blogger George Lads. Our music video of the week comes from This Human Condition for their dance track Psychotropic. And we want to know about the weirdest place you've seen a gig. Plus, we catch a live performance from London-based Paluche, courtesy of Audiophiles. First, though, more live music, this time from our second fundraising lounge room gig. This is Little Dusty. So that was Little Dusty performing live in the living room of George Lads back in November. Now it was George's idea to hold the living room gigs to raise money for the Bristol Music Show. We're ever so thankful for him and it was so much fun. So let's hear from the man himself.
I wondered if you could just tell us why we're here and, and who you are, I guess, as well. Okay, so I saw the um, crowdfunding campaign and uh, I just thought, oh, it'd be a great idea to do a couple of lounge room gigs. And I suggested it to you. You said, yeah, and then some bands agreed. Um, tell us about your involvement in the, in the kind of local music scene. I run a website called Shining Lights, um, shininglights.co.uk, and um, we started this year just interviewing mainly Bristol musicians about the interaction between music and money. It's kind of a subject we don't talk about in this country because it's just not something. It's either dull or it's private, isn't it? So we don't talk about it. So what we're trying to do is just give someone or people a place to go where they can get free information and there's nothing there. You know, we're not trying to get anything out of them. So what kind of things do you ask musicians then? I kind of started quite easy. So I started by asking them a little bit about their history, how they started. When I spoke to you on the radio, I talked about Sound of the Sirens um, because that was a recent one. And it's interesting because you find that a lot of the time that people have been doing it for a long time, so they've been doing it for seven years and only now have they started to make money. And then you kind of move on to the more sort of questions about how they finance it, how they finance albums or EPs, and, and it kind of builds from there. Well, right now we're in your kitchen. We're just about to start the second lounge gig. Have you ever, before this, had you ever been to a living room gig? Because it's becoming quite a thing now. When we went to see High Climbers, they, were, they had a really small, intimate uh, gig. And, um, and that kind of was a sort of lounge room, but not really a lounge room. But it had sofas, so I count it as that. And that made me think. I, I, it was lovely, because I think there was, what, 20, 25 people there? And, um, and it just felt much more intimate. And tell us how the night goes. Maybe you can describe the, the last one for us. Um, yeah, so the last one was a little bit chaotic, I think, but it was, it was nice. Um, basically, people tend to turn up about half seven. Um, we make sure that there's plenty of alcohol here. And, um, and pasta. And pasta, yeah. Come and forget the pasta. Well, we've bought sweets this time. So, um, yeah, we're just trying to make it as friendly as possible and um, get people in, get people talking, get them talking to the band. We did a raffle, which was brilliant, and there were lots of fantastic prizes. And it's just a lovely evening. I think it's a friendly, um, great evening. And it's great, you know, to try and get people to give a bit of money and raise it for a good cause. You know, going back a few generations, you probably wouldn't have that sort of older people, I say older, my age, who, who are into younger bands, you know. And, and whereas now I think that the people listen to it whatever their age is. And I, and I think that's great. So actually, I think we've got quite a mix of ages and... Yeah, hopefully we're introducing new music to people, which is fantastic. Thank you so much. You've, you've never hosted a gig before, have you, apart from these ones? No, no. And yeah, I'm not sure if I'll do it again, but... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, George. We really appreciate it. You know, you're just doing this off your own back. You've supplied people with alcohol and you've, been, you've sold all the tickets and it's amazing. So thank you so much. Don't lay on the court up shoes or what sharp was a stone. Don't lay on the court up shoes or... Huge thanks to George and his family for welcoming us into their living room twice, in fact. Uh, why not check out his finance and music blog to read interviews with some of our favourite Bristol acts? Yep, and we'll be back with George and his living room later on in the show. We've also got some live music from London-based Paluche, courtesy of Audio Files. But for now, as we head into the break, here's the music video of the week. This human condition are currently running a pledge music campaign to release their upcoming album, Project Zero, and they're already well over target. So here's their most recent release from that album, it's Psychotropic.
world is psychotropic She's living a hypnotic state of mind Her world is psychotropic Welcome back to the Bristol Music Show. We've still got loads more to come. But first, Audio Files follows us every Monday night on BCFM Radio, bringing you a little taster of some of the acts that are visiting our city. This week, they went out to catch a gig with London-based Paluche. OK, welcome to Audio Files. It's a Monday night and we're on the Thecla. We're just about to see Paluche play, so why don't you check them out with us?
The strangest place I've been to a gig was probably in London in uh, this strange chamber by the Brunel Museum. You had to crawl through a tiny little hatch on your, you know, on your hands and knees and then climb down about 80 feet of scaffolding and then it was just in this big concrete cylindrical bunker and half of it flooded but we just carried on anyway. It was a band called Champs and then Rain supported as well. It was just magical really. I was in Moscow at the time and these guys invited me to go to this gig and it was like a mod revival kind of rock mod kind of concert thing and we ended up going into this cave. I mean it was just a door in the street but uh, when you walked in you kind of went down and it was in this kind of like cavern cave kind of thing and everything was built into the rock so that was really cool but it was Moscow so it was going to be cool anyway. My weirdest gig moment really wasn't a gig, but I worked for a radio station in Leeds and saw Jamiroquai in a record library, which was a bit odd. He was doing a kind of rehearsal for his, his gig in front of about 10 people, and I was one of those 10. There you go. It was a good gig, actually. The weirdest place. Well, you have to experience the place to know how weird it is, but it's a place called the Reggae Lounge in um, the Gap of Barbados. And the lounge creates all sorts of images that it's um, a nice, sophisticated place. Let me tell you, people, it's not. But Ferris Hammond was absolutely fantastic there. So that's a few of the weird and wonderful places people have seen gigs. What about you? Um, I don't know. I, I'd seen a gig in someone's shed before, which was like a fundraiser, okay. um, which was quite cool. And also uh, someone's bedroom, which was in the... F well, it was officially the front room arts trail, um, but it was actually in a bedroom. Okay. Um, but that was kind of cool as well. Is that in Totterdown? Very intimate, yes. Okay. I think I saw one once in a laundrette when we were recording our session with Lady Nade. Yes. So we had all the kind of washing machines and tumble dryers in the background. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. That's about as weird as yeah. I've gone there. I went to the rabbit hole at Glastonbury. That's, that's pretty weird. You have to crawl through a tunnel to get there. Anyway. There you go. Get in touch with us anyway on Twitter and Facebook and carry on telling us some of the weird places that you might have seen a gig. And we'll be back next week. We've got George Ed, R&B artist, live in session. And we'll also be previewing Independent Venue Week, which starts across the country and here in the West on the 25th. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Kiss you, it'll grip you and twist you and make